This is Algebra 2, Lesson 13 on page 71. This lesson is on substitution. So thus far, we have had problems such as this, where we decided the value of M is negative one, the value of N is say four. I just made up numbers, right? <clears throat> and what is substitution? What did we do, Tres? We substituted one number for another, usually um, in the equation, so we can solve it. Okay, when can we use substitution? Yes, Nora? When two values are equal, that is correct. The only time we can use substitution is when two values are equivalent. So the value of M is equivalent to negative one, and the value of N is equivalent to four. Therefore, in this expression, for the value of, for M, we are going to substitute negative one. This is what you've been doing, right? So that's negative four minus 16, which is negative 20. Now, what if we were to use that same expression and I said, instead of M is negative one, I said the value of M is that, and the value of n is that. How is this different from what we worked? I don't like the one on the right. It feels different, doesn't it, Therese? Isn't it like, I forgot the word, but it's, it's not just numbers, it's, um, by, it's, it's variables. variables. It, this has variables in it, this was only constants. But does it mean the same thing? It does. For the value of M, I would now substitute in X plus four. Right? M times n minus n squared. So for that value, I'm substituting in x plus four. It just feels different, but I'm still saying the value of m is equivalent to now a binomial. All right, the value of n is y minus y squared, and I could work that out. All right, let's suppose that I have something such as this. Can I use substitution in this case? Yes. I can. How? By, by substituting y with one of the equalities. Equalities. Yes. So this is what y equals. I could substitute that value in where y is in the other equation. So we could say negative x plus six equals two x plus four. I begin with two linear equations, right? Which that's what we've been doing. We've been graphing linear equations. And if I wanted to solve for one of the variables, I could use substitution. All right, so let's continue 
to work this out. I will add x to both sides. So 6 equals 3x plus 4. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. 3x is 2. Divide by 3. The value of x is 2 thirds. The value of x is 2 thirds. What, what does this information give me? Yes? Well, you could plug it in for x and then have y. Okay, I could. Absolutely. I could plug it in for x and then I would have y. You want to do that? We can. And then I'll ask again, what, what is that point? So let's plug it into this one. Y equals negative two thirds plus six. We'll make a common denominator. So what, that's 18 thirds. What's the value of Y? 16 thirds, 18 minus two. All right, so what do those points represent, Therese? A point on a graph. It does represent a point on a graph. What else? What does this coordinate point represent? <clears throat> we've used substitution to solve for x and y. Actually, we've used substitution twice, right? The first time, we substituted in for y. The second time, we substituted in for x. Here. <laughs> right? We've used substitution twice. But what is this point? <clears throat> It is the point where these two lines intersect. So if this line looks like that and this line looks like this, it's the point of, what do we call that in geometry? What did we call that in geometry, which still exists today, is the point of concurrency. Yes. So what is the whole purpose of using substitution with equations? To find the point of concurrency. That is the only point that both of these equations have in common. Either they have, there are, and there are always three options in terms of what points equations have in common. Either equations, two equations graphed look like that, and those are parallel lines. What do we know about parallel lines? Say that? They never, intersect the they never intersect and they lie on the same plane. So when you use substitution, you're not going to get an answer because they never intersect. Or we're going to have this option where there is one point of intersection. But there's a third option. A third option is, are you watching me graph these lines? There's the first one. Okay, you have to watch me graph the second one. Yeah, guess what? That would be something like, That, they're the exact same equation. All right, what did I do to this equation to get to this one? Multiplied everything by two. Every term is a multiple of another. Or they can have every point in common. Thus, they are the exact same line. When we use substitution and elimination 
now at this stage, this is what we're solving for. But I need you to back out to see a bigger picture of really what the options are and what we are solving for, okay? All right, so let's walk through the examples on page 72. Substitution is so important. So important in all of math. All right, look at example one. <clears throat> The problems are x equals y plus 5 and 3x plus 2y equals 5. Our instructions are to use substitution to solve for that point of concurrency. What should we substitute in? I'm going to call that equation 1 and the second one equation 2. What are we going to substitute into which equation, Ashley? You would take the... Like where it says 3x, and for x you put y plus y. I'm going to take this first equation, what x is set equal to, and I'm going to substitute it into this second equation where x is. Because it's a binomial, I'm opening parentheses. Because that 3 has to be distributed to both terms in that binomial. <clears throat> we distribute the 3... And we solve for y. I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. Combine my like terms. 5y is negative 10. Divide by 5. The value of y is negative 2. I have one coordinate point where those two equations are concurrent. But I need, because we're on the Cartesian coordinate system, I need the other coordinate point, the x value. So to solve for x, which equation would you substitute y in? 1 or 2, Evie? Mm -hmm. 1, always, right? Go substitute it back into the one that you used substitution into the first time, in the first place. Negative 2 plus 5, so the value of x is 3. Your solution should be written as a coordinate point, 3, negative 2. That is the point of concurrency for those two graphed lines, those two linear equations. All right, example two. Everybody understand this so far? We're same place. I know most of you would have done this. In algebra 2, in algebra 1, well, of course you're going to get in algebra 2. 3x minus y is 11. 2x plus 3y is negative 11. Now we do not have an equation that says x equals or y equals. So, Michael, what do you think we should do? Oh, so take number one and rearrange it so that it turns into like a y equals. Like Correct. Let's rearrange the first one so it ends up with y equals. Notice he looked at both of the equations. He chose the one variable that had a coefficient of one. Well, actually, it's negative one, so we're going to have to get rid of the negative. All right, so we'll subtract the 3x from both sides. And I can't substitute it for negative y. I have to substitute it for positive y. So what I'm effectively doing is multiplying every term by negative 1 or dividing by negative 1 and coming up with your positive y. Really, I'm changing the sign of every term. Okay? Now I have y equals. So I can substitute this into the other equation where y the value y is. You know, variables represent real values. That can obviously vary, right? 
2x, let's distribute the 3, plus 9x minus 33 is negative 11. So we'll add our 33 to both sides. Combine our like terms. 11x is 22. Dividing both sides by 11, the value of x is 2. Am I done? No. Where am I going to substitute x equals 2 back into, Corinne? In the x in the first equation, but I'm going to go here because it's y equals. y equals 3 times 2 mi minus, not equals, minus 11. So the value of y is 6 minus 11 y is negative 5, then I write my coordinate point, x, y, in that order. <clears throat> All right, let's work the last example, and then we're going to go on and talk about the second part of the lesson. I normally wouldn't, but because I'm videoing, I'll go ahead and teach through it, and then I will stop the video. All right. Last example, x plus y equals 20, <clears throat> 5x plus 10y equals 150. All right, so Jaden, what would you do? Rearrange the first term. Okay, what, what do you want to rearrange it as? Um, could you just subtract? The y? Yes. Yeah. I can subtract the y from both sides. I end up with x is negative y plus 20. So really you could have solved for either one of these variables, right? All right, so for x, we'll substitute in negative y plus 20 into this second equation. I always open parentheses. And when we distribute that 5, we have negative 5y plus 100 plus 10y is 150. We subtract the 100, the constant, from both sides. Combining our like terms on the left, we end up with 5y is 50. Dividing both sides by 5, the value of y is 10, but I'm not done. Sarah, what should I do next? Plug it back into the rearranged equation. Plug it back into the rearranged equation. So the value of x is going to be the opposite of 10 plus 20. So x is also 10. So my coordinate point is 10, 10. All right. Now let's look at the area of an isosceles triangle. What is an isosceles triangle? What is it? Correct. Two sides are, have the same length. <clears throat> okay, so this is, you'll have to remember from geometry. When I draw, uh, it's called the median, from the vertex perpendicular to the other side, it, it bisects this side. So instead of the whole side, well, the whole side is still four, it divides that side into two equal parts, bisects it. Such that now I can find the height or the altitude by using what? Yes, Therese. The Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem. All right, so uh, help me help me write the Pythagorean theorem, Therese. So it'd be uh, t squared plus h squared equals five squared. Yes. Solving for h, that's four plus h squared is twenty-five. 
subtracting the 4, we have h squared is 21. When we take the square root, is it plus and minus 21? No. Why is it not? It's distance. Yep. Yeah. It's length. Distance. All right, so it's just the square root of 21. It's only a positive distance. So now we can calculate the area. What's the area of a triangle? Equals what? One half, so the area equals one half base times height. So the area is what? Two squared to 21. And whatever the measurement is. 